Okay, so this is the second set of bonding questions. They're all multiple choice past paper questions from AQA um, A-level chemistry papers. So I'm going to recommend you try each question in turn and then pause it, work through the video to check the answer and then go on and do the next one. So this is a really common question type. We want to know which of these does not have a permanent dipole. There are so many examples of this, and you'll see that across the videos that are on this topic, the multi-choice questions. Now, what we're looking for in this case is symmetry. And in the example that we've got here, all of the bromines are pulling equally on the central carbon. They're all equally electronegative. There's an equal difference in electronegativity. And so because we have that symmetry, their pull cancels out and we end up not having a permanent dipole at all. So here we've got shapes of molecules. Um, <clears throat> and you are trying to work out which of them will have lone pairs. Obviously, we know that lone pairs have an impact on the shape of the molecule. They can cause a reduction of around two and a half degrees on the bond angle. Um, now, when I take a look and I see that aluminium is in group three and it has three bonding pairs, because each, each of the aluminium's three electrons goes into a bond with a chlorine, that tells me there are no lone pairs on there. Similarly, I can actually look at IF6 plus and PCL6 minus, and because there are six bonds around that central atom, it's very, very unlikely. You're certainly not going to see an example where there would be a lone pair as well. Six pairs of electrons is really the maximum that you will see. But if I draw out my ClF3, you can see that have actually got two lone pairs on there. So the correct answer is B. Still on shapes of molecules, still thinking about bond angles on this one. The most likely bond angle around the oxygen atom, well, if I draw it out in this way, this CH3, CH2 structure is not so important. But this as a diagram, is currently incomplete because I've not included lone pairs. So if I put those on, I can see that around the oxygen, there are two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. That's four pairs of electrons in total. That tells me the shape is based on tetrahedral, but each of the lone pairs drops the bond angle by two and a half degrees. So my 109.5 degree tetrahedral bond angle drops to 104.5. So the correct answer is A. So we're still on shapes of molecules and some of the shapes you're familiar with, some of them less so, but you can apply your knowledge of the ones that you have done. We want to know which of these are not planar. Well, if I draw them out, you can see that the methanol that we have at the top is trigonal planar. The double bond will act in the same way as a single bond when it comes to um, electron repulsion. So we end up with bond angles of 120. And we've got a similar idea when we get down to the C2H4. Each of the carbons has three bonds around it. One of them happens to be a double bond, but that means bond angles 120 shape trigonal planar about each carbon. If I move on to CH3+, plus, well, the plus means an electron has been lost from the carbon. So that again takes us to three bonding pairs, no lone pairs. That's also trigonal planar, bond angle 120 degrees. Whereas our methanol, very similar to the previous question, actually, where we already know there's a bond angle of 104.5, is definitely not going to be planar. About the carbon on the left, the structure is tetrahedral, and around the O, it's based on tetrahedral, it's angular or V-shaped or bent, so certainly not planar. Correct answer is C. So 
So we're now identifying which of the statements is not correct. So let's take a look at these. Intermolecular forces exist between all simple molecules. This is true. Van der Waals forces come from the random movement of electrons. Um, everything has van der Waals forces. All simple molecules have van der Waals forces. So because that is a true statement, it's not the correct answer because we're looking for a statement that's not correct. In hydrogen bonding, the strongest intermolecular force uh, in ethanol, hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force. And we've got the OH bond to, to prove that. Hydrogen bonding exists in anything where the H is bonded to an N, an O, or an F. Hydrogen bonding can occur between a C double bond O and an HN in proteins. Absolutely, I've drawn one in there, but we've got the very delta positive and our delta negative oxygen, so we are going to get a hydrogen bond there. So that leaves us with hydrogen bonding occurring between HBr molecules. And again, just to restate what I've just said, hydrogen bonding can only exist if the H is bonded to an N, an O, or an F. A really common question here where we're basically having to identify what the strongest intermolecular force is and once we've identified that we can work out which of them would give rise to the highest boiling point. So C2H4 and C2H6 are hydrocarbons and we know that the strongest intermolecular force they have is van der Waals. If I take a look at the other two we have got N in one of them and F in the other. But remember, hydrogen bonding only occurs where the H is bonded directly to an N, an O, or an F. So in C, that is the case. It has hydrogen bonding. But in D, it is purely permanent dipole, permanent dipole. There are no hydrogen bonds there. Correct answer is therefore C. And back to shapes of molecules, it lends itself really well to multiple choice questions. Which of these are not planar? Well, I've drawn out the three that are trigonal planar, similar to a question you've already tried earlier in this video. Each of these have a bond angle of 120 degrees. NCL3, when you draw it out, has got three bonding pairs and one lone pair. That tells us it's based on tetrahedral, Bond angle would be 107 degrees, but for this question more pertinently, that is certainly not planar. Okay, so which of these do not contain delocalized electrons? Well, benzene certainly does. It has a delocalized ring. That's covered in the aromatics topic in year 13 in great detail. We know that in graphite there are delocalized electrons. Each carbon has one delocalized electron. That's what allows graphite to conduct electricity, despite being a non-metal. And we know that metals have delocalized electrons. And sodium would be one delocalized electron per sodium atom because it's in group one. It loses one electron to get the full outer shell, forming the Na plus ions. So that leaves us with polypropene. Now, <clears throat> polypropene is entirely made up from covalent bonds. There are no delocalized electrons within there. So the correct answer is A. And another shapes of molecules question, which you possibly do need to sketch out to be able to do this with confidence. Some of them you will know. Some of them might take a little bit more work. Let's take a look at A. BF3. Well, boron is in group three, so we're thinking three bonding pairs. That's trigonal planar, 120 degree bond angle, certainly not pyramidal. For B, CH3 plus. Well, carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. The positive means we take that down to three. It's lost an electron. So we once again have three bonding pairs, no lone pairs. So the bond angle is 120, trigonal planar, not pyramidal. If I move on to C, 
I've got CH3 minus. Now, the CH3 minus does mean that I've gained an electron. So on here, I've got three bonding pairs and a lone pair. And that means the correct answer is C. You're more than welcome to draw out SF3 minus as extra practice to show that that will not be pyramidal in shape. But this is CH3 minus is trigonal pyramidal, bond angle 107 degrees. It's been reduced by two and a half from the tetrahedral because of the presence of the lone pair.